Now, you're taking a live look at Beijing, China tonight. It's actually, what, 11, 12 a.m. there right now? Mm -hmm. Thursday morning, thousands of athletes preparing for the competitions of their lives. In fact, uh, those that are there know they're now just a day away from the opening ceremonies. But 40 years ago, this week, in fact, American athletes were competing in Mexico City. They would have been competing here in Detroit if not for a small twist of fate. And think of that, you know, Detroit placed second in the bidding for the 68 games. Surviving organizers still feel the agony of the defeat. Tonight, Guy Gordon takes us through their Olympic dreams and what it could have meant for the city of Detroit. Oh, that was tough. That was tough. Fred Mathai remembers the heartache of watching the Olympic flame burning in Mexico City. Bringing the games to Detroit was a Mathai family quest beginning with his father in 1932. We could show the world that this is not a dirty factory town. Every bid through the 40s and 50s fell short, but 1968 was to be Detroit's year. Is Detroit, USA. Bound books and a lavish documentary promoting Detroit's many virtues helped make us the U.S. Olympic Committee's choice over six other cities. President Kennedy addressed the International Selection Committee on film. Detroit is the center of a great sports community in central United States. We are anxious to open our doors in this section of the country and indeed throughout the entire United States to you all. Imagine it, Wayne State's campus was to be the Olympic Village. The state fairgrounds, it would be home to a new 110,000 seat stadium. A state-of-the-art velodrome for cycling would be there as well. Brennan Pool in Rouge Park would host the aquatic events. Belle Isle and the Detroit River would be home to a first-of-its-kind rowing facility. Detroit had 19 venues. We could do it all within uh, really a 20-mile radius. No other city in the globe could do that. We had a lower altitude, better for athletes than the thin air of Mexico City. We had 80 organized ethnic groups supporting the bid. We looked like an Olympic village. It was really inspiring to see how the city came together. The city came together from all areas. At the selection hearing in 1963, Detroit's bid received a standing ovation, and committee members were certain that they could win it on the second ballot, that the foreign supporters they had would vote for their home country's bid on the first go-around and then support Detroit. But that second vote never came. By one vote, Mexico City won a majority on the first ballot. One vote and also 20 cents. Mexico promised to feed athletes for $2.80 a day. Detroit could only promise $3 or less. 45 years later, it still hurts. You make me cry now, my friend. Uh, uh, it was shock. Uh, it was overwhelming disappointment because we knew in our hearts this would be make Detroit a different city. Silver instead of gold. It may have been a turning point in Detroit's fortunes for decades. I don't think we would have had the riots in 67 had we had all these uh, uh, facilities in and the world here and all the participation among the citizens about entertaining and showing the world what we were. Cooperation in the community. Matthai says yes, Detroit has its challenges today, but we still have the international border, better venues, and the Olympic spirit and ethnic diversity. And that's what keeps his and his father's dream alive. Now, I'm certain Detroit could rally up that kind of spirit. We can rise again. What a fascinating story. You're not story. the only one. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? It is. Detroit holds the dubious distinction of making the most bids of any city in the mm. world without ever hosting the games. Uh, the Olympics, though, begin here. Local 4, Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time from, this time, of course, Beijing, China. That means we're down to one day, 20 hours, and 13 minutes before the...